Uh, well, I'm Helena Horton. Um, these are some of the puppets that I've made. Uh, they're stop motion puppets. And they, um, they're fully poseable. And most of their bits are replaceable, which is quite good fun. Oh, wow. Because they're specifically for stop motion. Oh, well, no, I can't get it back in. That's really useful, isn't it? <laughs> Am I allowed to touch it then? Um, yeah, you can. You can pull her head off if you really want. <gasps> no. Do it. Can I move her arm? Yeah, you can move her. No, she's fully bendy because she's wow. meant for stop motion. I, I specialise um, at university in stop motion. Um, and this is kind of just mostly just a way to keep my hand in while I'm doing a nine to five. Um, but yeah, I, I just really like making weird things. Do you make the films then? Um, when I have the time, I haven't animated anything for a, a while. There's um, a film that I did the animation for, an independent film called Ella and the Blind Witch, um, which I did in, oh, some years ago now. But it was a live action film and the fairy tale was told by Shadow Puppetry. So it was all, I, I didn't actually have a proper studio at the time, so it was all done um, in a teepee that I made. Oh, lush. With, um, with like, I made a light box out of some broken picture frames and um, an old lamp. Nice. And just kind of did it that way. Um, but yeah, that's one of the things I've done a, a while ago. With, with 3D characters? No, that was with paper puppets. Um, these guys I haven't got around to animating yet. Um, they were on display a while ago as well at the watershed um, for the animating thing that they did. Um, I helped with a friend of mine, Suki Lala Green. She did. Um, she was running a workshop for the kids while um, I think it's Song of the Sea was playing, and we taught some kids how to animate, and that was a good fun day. Cool. Yeah. They look, They've got a real kind of uniqueness to them. I mean, I really, I really like their faces. They look slightly magical. Yeah. You know? I think that's, I hope that that's what comes across. I like, um, I like to try and do people with all different body sizes and all different, I don't want to just kind of do a very specific type if I can avoid it. Um, yeah, I like doing things that are a little bit weird, hopefully with a little bit of sense of humour. So when you make them, do you have a sense of who they are and what stories are going to um, unfold for them in, in the future? Do um, they have their own fully formed character or does it kind of come about slowly? Sometimes, yeah. Um, sometimes they have backstories. Usually before I make something, I come up with a story for the character. These guys, actually, um, I didn't. They're one of the only... Um, puppets that I didn't come up with a backstory for. Um, I just wanted to make some mythical creatures and see how they would move. And I thought it would be more interesting to make something with goat legs than the regular legs because they move and they bend in a different way to human legs. And I was interested in the way that you get someone with octopus legs to walk along. I thought that a sea witch would be more interesting that way. But as I said, I haven't gotten around to animating them yet, so yeah. at some point. You know, I, I met a guy called Pam um, on Friday, mm. and he used to have um, really short Achilles mm. um, when he was younger. So he, he spent most of his years walking up on tiptoes, and mm. so now he's, he's got this Pam character. And he does storytelling, and he wears stilts, and um, so I was chatting to him because he wanted to model for us. So I'm going to take some photos of him being all pan like. It's really funny because we were here, and I was just turning the the, the wheel on the mermaid, yeah. and then I went like over there, and then I came back, and the mermaid had turned <laughs> <to> pan. <laughs>